Hello. So, my name is Mr. Mitt. And um, I am trying to get things set here. There we go. Um, let me do this, actually. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with the way you speak. That is hilarious. <laughs> My brain just went down. Okay. Mm, that's right. I talked about. Um, I don't want that. I want to do it on this. Okay. I talked about uh, printing this and digitally painting it today. I think what we're gonna I'm gonna do. Mm, I'm gonna save this. Just keep saving them here. Make a new one. Um, oh, I don't have the ability to. Okay, let's do this. This, this. I'm gonna put this down here. Let's see the examples that are in this lesson here. That's an important one. That's a pretty important one. Uh, that's a fun one. Maybe we'll just work on these three examples and we'll start with this. Um, so just a word of background here. Um, my name's Brian McAndrews, uh, also known as Mr. Mick to my students. Um, I am a teacher at Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy. Uh, I like to put this up so people can see my school and they can see my principal um, about us the principal it's a creative arts school and um, it's dr. Brockington my principal um, we're a creative arts school in Camden New Jersey let me get rid of this <laughs> it's the vitamin C stuff <laughs> vitamin C uh, halls I say vitamin C candy my daughter yells at me because she's like it's not candy and I'm like it's not exactly medicine um this is kind of cool this is like shielding my eyes from the bright light I gotta put a diffuser on that light but I am uh, I'm teaching some drawing classes and lessons here and um, I so here's my email brian.mcandrews at gmail or bmcandrews at camden.k12.nj.us those are my two email addresses my one's my obviously my uh, teaching email and if you wanted to join my Google classroom you could just send me an email. If you're over 13, you can send me an email, uh, request the code. And if you're under 13, have your parents send me an email. Um, let me move this there. I'm gonna try my best to get right into the drawing here and not spend too much time talking. Let's see if this will work. Doesn't, for some reason, the wireless part. I have the, the cable here. It's no big deal. So I've kind of ceased to use the other side. I, I have a whole other... Sorry if that makes... That's very loud. I also didn't feel like, feel like streaming right now. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with you. It's me. Um, I was just upstairs. I just had taught this morning and finished teaching and was just feeling a little bit bummed and was thinking you know what I'm not I'm not gonna go upstairs mm. upstairs you guys are all downstairs <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna go downstairs and work on this but I decided that that would be lame of me so okay so we start with the division sign and I'm going to talk about um, this method of drawing like I do each time. But now I'm just going to try to get into the actual art a little faster. So it's not 10 or 15 minutes of me going on about art. Um, I learned about uh, this, this method um, because I was working through the book of uh, 
Walt Stanchfield. And um, his book, because uh, he used to teach this life drawing class, and he would see certain problems that, that artists were having in their drawing. I'm just feeling a little sleepy right now. Feeling a little bit like I've been doing this all day, and now I don't want to do this anymore. And I know there aren't many people watching this <laughs> right now. I have this idea that there's kids there that need an art class. And uh, I'm going to be the art teacher for them. And that still may be the case. And it might not be right now. It might be later. Okay, so... Notice here, these are all maintaining, they're all parallel, okay? And if things seem like they're getting weird or getting off or something's not quite right, it's probably because this is getting messed up. They're not maintaining their angle anymore. <laughs> I always like <laughs> have a tricky time to deal with the actual steeper. So my fiance Maria is uh, out there courageously with the mask on she's running errands and uh i was not a fan of that this 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 keeping those parallel and the tricky part can be here but you just want to make sure it's a little bit tricky for me with drawing with this tablet but i do feel like i'm getting better at it actually but notice this 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 and this and this they're all maintaining their angles relative to each other Okay, I didn't see. See, I have a, a Steam account for gaming. I like to game, and um, I've made friends with people. Like I was in a game with them, and I became friends with them because maybe we wanted to keep playing games together. But excuse me, then I forgot, or I haven't played with them in a long time. So there's all these notifications pop up for people that I am. I don't quite remember. All right, so here we go. What does this remind people of? If we were going to try to put all of the examples together, now i got to remember which were the examples we're going to have today. The bucket and the letter. Okay, so they could be together in the sense that they belong together, or maybe they could just share the same space. So, for example, maybe the bucket's up here, or maybe the bucket's on the edge here, um, or maybe someone's walking along. So this kind of reminds me of a step pyramid and I believe it's spelled I should search this up step pyramid and because uh, if we think of connecting the end like a like a typical pyramid that you might think of like that right see I'm building that pyramid Jack's barking I just feel a little bit Well, you know what it is. This isn't rocket scientist. I'll tell you exactly what it is. I didn't go to bed the last night till pretty late. Like, you know what? I think about it now. It was 1.30. And then I woke up this morning at um, 6.30. So I got five hours, which is not the best. You're supposed to be getting eight or nine hours of sleep. And I woke up at 6.30... And I started working on things and doing stuff. And so that means I got, um, you know, the five hours of sleep or whatever. And I'm feeling a little bit like, ooh, like a little bit burnout because of that. And I'm, I'm like, why do I feel so kind of down? <laughs> it's good they haven't slept. Oh, my gosh. All right. So you're seeing me, you're seeing me out here, warts and all, you know, and this is your art class, <laughs> but I will tell you this about me. I'm, I'm someone that, um, kind of opens up a little bit. Um, uh, I'm just a more, um, I'm going to share some of the things as I learn them in life in general, beyond just how do you draw this? 
stack of boxes. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so so I'm making sure everything checks out here. These things are all angled properly. Now, if I zoom in, I, I you know, like I've said, I think the the um, McIntyre uh, examples are but but a jumping off point. Um, okay. I apologize. I'm going to turn that into theater mode. Tim to take it off. But you know, I, I realize now. Like I was, I was even sitting and thinking about, um, you know, journaling a bit, writing down my thoughts. And maybe if I'd done that, I would have, because what happens is, um, for me, okay. So, so this is light. The light you gotta think about is coming, probably from this way, or the light is coming more from this way, and then this is in shadow. So we can think of probably a shadow going back here too right I think that kind of works doesn't it so we're using what elements of perspective are we using here we're using foreshortening right um, because we have this foreshortened square here and you can even think if you're using the compass method which I think is a great method um, then we have this angle that goes that way, and we have that angle that goes that way. So the compass, this relates to the compass. You know, it's like you start off with a division sign, and once you have that mastered, at a certain point, you can just think about these things in terms of directions of the compass. Um, okay, what else? Okay, so we got more shadows here. And I shade my things like this because I'm left-handed. I have a feeling that, that Bruce McIntyre was right-handed. So your shading lines might move down like that as opposed to this because you're right-handed, it might be easier to go that way. And that's fair enough. Now, um, I'm using a drawing tablet. If you have one of those or you have a fancy iPad or a fancy phone, you could use that to draw. But if you want to just use pencil and paper, that would be my suggestion. That's my favorite way to draw. Um, I'm moving the drawing pad around a little bit here to get the angles that I need, and I think that's a good idea. I wouldn't normally keep my pencil, my uh, my paper, so up and down like this. I would be moving my paper around to whatever the the best angle was for me to work. But it's it's interesting because um, I feel you know feeling a bit tired and and feeling a little bit like down because I'm tired and I tend to think what's what's wrong something's wrong and I don't know what it is and maybe that was I I didn't completely you know because I had lots of energy ener energy and lots of energy earlier. I want to just put the shadow, kind of make the shadow just square off like the top ones have been squaring off. Look at that. Isn't that a cool little stack of boxes. And that stack of boxes could be made into anything. Okay, I'm going to use this smudge pen. Oh, smudge brush, that's right. And just brush this back. Just like if you had a paper towel, um, just you could lightly brush it with your paper towel. Even out some of the shadows. Even things out a little bit and then come back in. Come back in here and start working into some of the, some of my lines again, just to make them a little bit cleaner. This is, this is something, you know, and, and you might, you might come in here and, you know, all of a sudden, boom, this becomes like a pyramid. This becomes like a, a giant building. Keep the angles, this angle's that way, keep that angle going too. Keep the angles true. Maybe there's a little bit of a half circle over here. All right. Um, so this getting into a little bit of the history of the step pyramid. Um, I was saying that you might think of the pyramids as being, you know, the like this, right? But originally, or to begin with. Pyramids started this way, and I don't know if people know this, 
well, you might know this, you might not, but pyramids were tombs where they bury mummies. And in Egypt, they thought it was very important to preserve the body for their religion. Um, this is ancient Egypt. And so they built these tombs to save, you know, protect the body of mostly the pharaohs. I, I don't know. I think some other lesser people got uh, their own burial chambers and burial temples. Um, I think some people might have been buried with the pharaoh, uh, like they were really important to the pharaoh, but the pharaohs were definitely, you know, they were getting the majority of the afterlife stuff. I'm just going to put a little bit of a top on that. Um, so, step pyramids. The pyramids start like this, like a, a series of steps. Actually, um, excuse me, they were probably more like literal steps like this. It's important to make sound effects when you draw sometimes. <laughs> um, that's my friend Zach playing there. Um, so actually before that backing up even before that the original um, burial chambers in ancient Egypt were, were just boxes like this actually I think they might have sloped a little bit like that they were made out of um, I believe they were made out of sandstone I believe that's what the pyramids are made out of, sandstone. And, oh, the dogs are getting, they're getting mad. At, I think a motorcycle drove by. They don't like the loud noise of motorcycles. So, uh, they make these, originally these mastabas, out of sandstone. And they, um, then they get the idea of, well, if you put one mastaba, stack it on top of another, well, stack one mastaba on top of another, and then on <laughs> top of another, kind of looks like this, doesn't it, right? It looks like a kind of a pyramid. <laughs> Excuse me. And, I mean, I'll do this, right? So, that's kind of the evolution of how the pyramids came to be. They started as mastabas. Then they became step pyramids like this. And then they just filled in this space here and they became the actual great pyramids that we know about, we know of today and people think about. There's another building, ancient building, that's kind of like this. Um, and that building might have had something, let me go this way with it. Just for some reason, sometimes it's just easier, certain angles. It would have had... Now that looked a little weird, it's because I need to keep the angle of this. This is fine. Just the angle of the bottom and then the angle of the side have to... Now if we put another one on... And you get extra credit if you know what this building would have been called in the, in the ancient world. This building would have been called, would have been in the center of a city. This building would have been called a ziggurat. And in the ancient world, um, back in Mesopotamia, so we're looking at, I believe this is about 4,000 BC. So it's about 6,000 years ago. Um, the beginnings of what we would call human civilization. Uh, so the first cities, and, and really, um, and this is an important thing to note, do you know why it's with the beginning of, there's prehistoric art, right? This is the beginning of a historic period. And you want to know, why it's called historic? It's called historic because this is the beginning of human history. And you're like, well, no, we, we know human beings existed before this. 
So this can't be the beginning of history. It is because it's the first, it's the beginning of writing. We have a written history of the people from this time. So sometimes there's people that came after this period um, in other areas of the world and they're still considered prehistoric relative to that area of the world and they're considered to be prehistoric because they have no written history. That's why. That's the thing that separates and again, I've just blended the whole thing in. If you took a paper towel and just blend that whole surface, like you're going over the entire, like say my drawing was here, I would take a paper towel and just shade over that whole surface, and then I'd go back in and draw some more. And that's the beginning of history. The beginning of history is when people started writing. We have a written history. We know something about uh, that people. And these would probably be stairs. <laughs> right? I'm just, uh, I'm just going, whoa, 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 what's that? Oh, I think that the pen cap was stuck. I think I need to replace this pen tip, pen, pen nib. Um, yeah, this needs to go this way too. So we might go here, we might go, you know, something, maybe a window or something. It's tricky. I need to. I think you're supposed to orient yourself towards your screen with these kinds of things. I think part of my what I'm messing up with is um. I gotta keep myself oriented right. I made a giant window. This is gonna go that way. This is coming back that way. Um. So. In studying art history, we're really studying human history. That's what art history is the study of. It's a study of human beings because before, before human beings were even making or writing things, we were, we were creating. We were drawing on cave walls. We were um, carving uh, faces and um, objects out of objects out of bones right we've had this drive from the beginning of time to create i'm just playing a little too deep right there's a reason you like to make images get philosophical whoa you all right the internet wants to know in your room? She's got the salt shaker in her room. <laughs> no, there's a reason why you like to make images. Because from the beginning of time, our ancestors have been doing so. It's a long tradition that you come out of. And um, learning to make images because what is what is making an image is leaving a mark it's leaving something behind or saying something communicating it's about communicating and there's something really deep down in us that wants to communicate to communicate with other people to connect with other people because what it is communication it's a kind of connection Right. This kind of—I mean, cigarettes did not have that kind of big window. <laughs> this is my cigarette. Ziggurats, The interesting thing: ziggurats, um in the ancient world were like government buildings, and they were like religious buildings. And uh, you would get—they uh, would be in the center of a town or a city, right? So, so there would be, like, say, let's say there's some sort of like. Um, you know, pathway leading up to this. There might be buildings here and buildings here and 
buildings there and maybe it's on the edge of a river right so well yeah i mean i don't know that they would build a ziggurat near the river like that because it was in the center of the city because it was where they it was like this was the center of their government this is the center of their religion this was the center of the whole entire culture was like centered around this thing and they believed at the top they would have a special little built a little room up here and see this was this was actually Bruce McIntyre's idea Bruce McIntyre's idea was like imagine if you had a teacher that could draw the examples and pictures existed then but and who's Bruce McIntyre? McIntyre is the guy that invented this way of drawing, the style of drawing, or that based on the elements of. Well, he's the one that codified. It. I'm sorry, I'm tired. He's the one that put together this book called the Drawing Textbook, because the principles of overlap and stuff existed before Bruce McIntyre came along. But he just wrote a book that summarized a lot of important, for me at least, summarized a lot of important ideas on how you draw. Sorry, I got a message here. Um, but in the top, up at the top of the ziggurat, you'd have a special room that only the certain people could go in. The person that ran the government, I believe in ancient times, was also the head of like the religion. That person could go in here, maybe some other priests. Maybe a priestess. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not an expert. And in that room, it was called a cella. <coughs> and that room. <coughs> you see him? You see this? This is what I gotta put up with. In that room, in the cella, at the top of the ziggurat. They believe the the Mesopotamians, the Sumerians, the Babylonians. These are all different Mesopotamian uh, uh, cultures. <laughs> the Sumeria was the big one, and where's Mesopotamia today? It's Iraq. In Iraq, it's the Mes the Mesopotamia was the area between the Tigris and the Euphrates. It was called the land between two rivers. I believe is what Mesopotamia means. And this was this, the Fertile Crescent. This is the area along those rivers was very, very good place for farming. And this is the beginning of where farming and stuff comes from. I mean, there's, there's the Mesopotamia, like if you're looking at the stuff that they invented, the wheel, writing, uh, city-states, or organization, di uh, distribution of labor, I mean, I granted they they aren't the I'm sure it was existing before then and in other places in the planet but in having all of that stuff together and bring it together and, and make it into a culture they are up there the uh, the um, Sumerians and Mesopotamians like especially the Sumerians Babylon is in this area you know that's something that's talked about in the in the various religious books so the top in the cella in the cella and this this whole thing is kind of like a ziggurat right a ziggurat this whole thing and we're looking at like we're looking at like 4000 BC um, in the top the top they believe the god <coughs> would the god, I'm not sure about the goddess. I'm not that familiar with all of the gods of Mesopotamia, but they believed in the top in the cella, the god would um, come down because they thought of the ziggurat. I believe ziggurat means man-made mountain. And they believed that they were making this building that was reaching up towards the gods. And then they got up close enough and then the gods would come down to meet them. When the gods came down to meet them, they would come into this space. And only the leaders and political and the priest class, religious class, could go there. 
and they believed that um, they had each city believed they had a protector a god that was their protector <coughs> and I am not the best with all the different names of all the different gods um, I want to say Anubis but I know that's an Egyptian god um, but I know there was the god of the sky was one of the gods um, that the city would be dedicated to or, or felt like that god was their protector and they felt like that god would come down to this space and meet with the leaders and you know they would put offerings in there things like that um, but Mesopotamia is such an interesting place and they really came up with some amazing amazing stuff um, I might lighten this layer up a little I know you can't do that I would again I would take the eraser and just lighten things up I just want to do that because I want to come in with a little bit of a finer pencil here and just draw things in okay I gotta keep my shading consistent again if I was I, I prefer if you're working in pencil and paper I prefer to be doing that uh, I just don't feel like I feel like you can see me you can see this you can see my examples all that stuff much more clearly here um, so this is the center of their government this is the center of their religion this is the center of their community and we in our society um, how are we different you might say well do we have anything that's similar to this we do we have government buildings we've done something where we've secularized our selves we have a government that is not religious because we have a society in which people can have all different types of religions so we're not mixing the religion and the government together for the most part and that's for the history teachers to talk about why that is the case <laughs> um, and but we do have government buildings just like this is a government building we also um, uh, have places of worship right we have temples and churches and stuff for all the different types of religions so we've we have that um, it was you know it's used for government buildings it's all what else was it could have been used for I mean I know I'm sure there's other functions maybe the um, I'm not sure if this was also the residence for the the king because the Sumerians had kings uh, they did not have a democracy uh, there was it was uh, more like you know the king and queen kind of idea but um, you can see in this uh, <coughs> ziggurat here of the Sumerians um, this was an influence on the Egyptians that came later the Egyptians first pyramids were like I said they had these mastabas they started building step pyramids they were influenced by because this this is Iraq it is uh, Mesopotamia which is modern day Iraq it's not very far from Egypt right you go through the middle what we think of as Middle East we go from Iraq down through the Middle East into into Egypt in northern Africa right and I'm not the best at geography either but from my basic understanding that's how things work and or the geography works right so what time we got 207 I'm, I might not go the whole time I might go for another five minutes here um, but you can see all of these potential possibilities. I've taken this simple example of um, McIntyre. I can even play the animation for you here. This is how I would normally have things going in my classroom, right? I start with the division sign. Can I zoom in here? Start with that division sign. And the really important thing, if we're looking at elements of perspective, we have the foreshortened square. Notice how this line here overlaps that right so we're getting if we look at all the examples let me do that in a different color right, port the, we have 
foreshortening. It's foreshortened. Here, we have overlap. All right, elements of perspective. We have shading. You know what? <laughs> oh, well, uh, these are all, these are right. Um, sorry, I got another message here. I just want to know. Someone's just leaving my house. It's okay, Pepper. Can you see him there? Please, we're, we're on the, we're on the internet. Sorry. Okay. Foreshortening. All my little messy notes here. We have here to here. We have overlap. <clears throat> oh, he's so cute. We have here. We have shading, and I need to go back in there and work on that shading, right? Foreshortening, overlap, shading. Uh, we have. You might argue size, but not exactly, because it's not like this one's bigger because it's closer per se. It's bigger because it's the biggest box on the bottom. But you could say we this bottom part feels closer, right? Versus say the top, right? So this is surface. The bottom of this is is towards uh, this is towards the bottom of the page, and the top is towards the top of the page. The bottom part feels like it's closer to us, right? Surface, the element of surface. Um, so surface, shading, overlap, foreshortening, not so much density, not so much size. So not so much density, not so much size, and we're missing one. Um, it's going to come to me. Not so much shading, not so much, no, no, not so much uh, density and not so much size. What is that last one? For shortening, overlap, shading, surface. We're not using size and we're not using density. Um, it's going to come to me. Think, 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 think. What is the seventh element of perspective? Surface lines. If you were yelling that out at home, good on you. <laughs> surface lines. Do we have some surface lines? We do. We got this kind of stuff going on, these kinds of lines. So we have some surface lines going on. We can even find the stairs. And those lines are going to be going in the same direction or the same perspective as these, right? So we do have some surface lines. Right? So we have one, two, three, four, five of the seven elements of perspective being used. We could even work the other two in if we really wanted to. And if you wanted to get really intricate and detailed, you can see this is just such a simple example. But it has so, um, it's got so much to do with art history. It can become the jumping off point of a bunch. You could use this to design your own cool building skyscraper zig design your own ziggurat that's something i do in my in my art history classes I have, I have students design their own ziggurats so um i want to thank you for tuning in i'm not going to go quite the whole time because i am <laughs> oh my gosh uh, but because i am running out of steam but um i will be back tomorrow Thank you for checking this out. If you want to join my Google Classroom and share your work with me and some other classmates, uh, and you're at home, you're in the K to 12 range of students, um, email me and I'll give you a Google Classroom code. Otherwise, you can work, just keep working on this stuff and maybe even shoot me an email and let me know how it's going. And like and subscribe and all that good stuff because I only have 42 subscribers and I like they have more it would be cool so i'll see you later i have one concurrent viewer and i think that that's me <laughs> all right catch you later